Hello, welcome to my How to Use Sketchbook Quick Tip series. This is a series where I will show you quick and easy tips that will help you on your journey learning sketchbook. If you would like a longer, more comprehensive and in-depth look at these same tips, you can follow the link above, which is a longer video of these very same tips. Otherwise, if you don't have a lot of time, these quick tips are for you. Thanks for watching and enjoy! Are you new to digital painting and constantly get discouraged every time you start something new because you pick a nice background color, you start painting, and then you decide you want to change the background color and it changes all your paint strokes that you just made. You are missing one crucial step before starting your painting and that is creating a layer of flats. This quick tip is about flat colors and why you need them. flat colors and why you need them. Now of course there's always an exception to the rule. If you're going to be painting in a traditional style with say watercolor or a translucent kind of oil brush style or even just pencil like this picture here, you need something behind it. Now apparently there's a white background here it looks like, right? But it's not actually part of the drawn image. It is separate. And I will show you why that is. So this background is sort of a working, it's not a full background, it's just a, a, a working background. So you can change the color of your canvas to be easier on the eyes or to see what works or just, you know, to be more customizable. But I cannot merge this with the one beneath it. I would have to do a couple of things. Now you could just add a layer, put it underneath this one. You could use the paint bucket. I will choose white and I will fill. I'm just tapping anywhere and now you have a white background. How do I know that? If I turn this one off, it's still there. If I turn this one off, you will see that it is transparent and it's completely transparent. If I delete this one that I just created and I change this to any color, let's say I wanted a nice kind of dark blue to make it look like it's going to be night out or moonlight, it changes the whole thing, her skin, everything. And if you are using a translucent type paint, this is especially important when you're using pencil, obviously, here. But if you're doing a translucent style paint, and I like to paint with this one in a natural blend brush type, standard is a little bit more opaque, but not completely. And as you can see, this brush, let's change the color. This brush has a nice texture to it. And you can see the background through it. Now this is with the opacity all the way up. So even if I turn this to standard, which is slightly more opaque, you just don't get that texture, but you could still see the background. And you can see how your other colors bleed through. And every time you pick up your brush, you get these harsh lines. That's why I like to use the natural blend. It's a lot more like using real paint because, you know, especially watercolor. When you're painting with watercolor, the wetness of the paint and, and your paper tend to, it bleeds into your other lines. So it kind of gives you this 
blended effect. You don't really get these harsh lines unless you're using something like marker or a very thick paint. Okay, so that's one reason why you would want some kind of flat, solid background that's not just a painted background. No matter how solid you try to make it, you, you, can, you, you can fake it a little bit. Uh, let's say you want to use this, I'll use this airbrush one, and I have it on standard, and I have the flow and the opacity up all the way. Everything up. And now I could paint back here. But it does still show through because I'm using pencil. Now if I add another layer and I pick a new color, see it does cover it quite well. But because it has soft edges, there will be areas where it can still show through. So you could potentially just go like this and put in some kind of solid background. It could be white, it can be any color you want it to be. Personally, what I like to do, and it's faster than just coloring it in like this, is I think of this another way. Uh, the great masters of the past, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Caravaggio, they used to do an underpainting. And that's what I try to use these flats as. Now you don't have to have more than one color, but I use more than one color just to get in my shadow tones and my highlight tones, or if I have different lighting effects, like I do actually in this painting, uh, I can get those in there quickly. And I also like how those colors kind of blend together in the middle and I will show you what I mean with that. So what I tend to do, and now this is using the selection tool, and I will get more into that and all the different uses of the selection tool later, but I have, I can either go around the whole thing with the lasso, but I'm not gonna do that. I instead am going to use the magic wand and I will select the white anywhere. And as you can see, it selects, it's not perfect. As you can see up here by her cloak above her arm, it goes into the drawing. Now I could fix that. Technically, I could turn this off. I could go to my pencil, use black, make sure I have black selected, make sure it's not too small from before. I can go in here and I, because it's a very grainy textured brush, it has holes in it and also some of these are not connected completely so where it's really light you might want to just make it a better line here a more defined line and that it's all connected so that when I come back in here now and I select it see now it's including all of that now in my the way I use it that doesn't really matter to me too much there's other ways around that so what I do is I just select it quickly and now it's not selecting the other side of the horse here so if you hit this plus and then tap on the white there it selects that along with the other side I'm also going to do up here by the main and now obviously there's some holes here and areas but I'm not going to worry about those for this purpose so now the outside, all the white areas are actually selected. I want the inside selected. So I hit inverse and now I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to bring that underneath the drawing. And now I'm going to take my paintbrush, paint bucket, I'm sorry, the paint bucket, and I'm going to add a nice color. And since she's very light skinned uh, and, and this works actually for any skin tone, uh, these darker shades of purples and like a plum color look really nice. You can also go with something that's a little bit more brownish orange, but I, I really like the dark plum colors. They look really nice 
for shadows on skin tone. Now, peach, the opposite of peach is kind of a, a blue. So, you know, you learn contrast colors are good for shadows and that's true and shadows do tend to be very blue. But when you start blending the peach colors with the little bit of the blue when they start merging together, you can get kind of a grayish charcoal -y color that you don't want. So it, can, it tends to look a little bit more charcoal. So if you're laying these colors on top of each other, like you might say with real paint, uh, you'll get that kind of look and the, it, it'll kind of lose its color. And I like these colors to really kind of show through in the shadows. So, and because, you know, there's blood under the skin, it adds that warm tone to it. So there are times when you're going to want to use blue, but uh, you know, there's always exceptions. But overall, I like to start out with a warm tone for skin tones. So, and, and I could do the horse separate if I wanted to. I could use, instead of this uh, magic wand, I could use the lasso and just carefully go around the areas I want. You know, if I wanted a different color on the horse than I do on her or her clothing different than her face, then I could do that and I would have separate blocks of flat color. But for this purpose, I'm just going to do the one. So I'm going to take the paint bucket. I've got a new layer. So if you look at this new layer, even though I have her selected, if I turn her off, it's just an empty selection. There's nothing there until I do that and I tapped inside and now it filled everything. Now you do have these areas where you know the lines were a little fuzzier but I'm not gonna worry about that that's fine for now. Now you could just start with this put on your drawing and start painting and you have your flat color you could use white again if you want um, you don't have to use colors uh, I like to use two colors sometimes three because I can quickly get the colors I need on here and then just start erasing out where I don't want that color to be. So let's do the peach. See now it's a nice flat opaque color and it has completely covered the, that plum color which is still there. And then now because I have these two colors here I'm actually going to turn off. I'll leave the selection on for now just because I want to show you something but I'm going to bring the darker one over the peach in this case and then I'm going to turn the purple one down a little bit I change the opacity so you get some nice color in the mid-tones okay and then now I can just because there's more dark than light that's why I put the dark one over the top of the light one and then if I go to a textured eraser of some kind that gives it kind of a it just gives it sort of a, I can't even explain what the texture looks like. It has sort of a plaster color on it or a plaster shape and texture to it. So these kind of show through here and there and it just it just adds dimension to your, your painting. And then when you paint over the top of that again with more translucent paint, it's, some of that will still show through. And this is just a style I've developed with real paint and I've brought it into digital and I just like doing that. So I would just come in here now and start erasing all the light areas. Like that. So that just gives you an idea now. Um, I'll go into blending modes later. That'll change what's happening with the way your color looks when you're using a black and white and then colorizing it. So this is always, I do this even when I just start painting and I just have a basic line drawing as my guides. So I'll put these darks in and then I'll just sort of blend them so you don't have these real like obvious paintbrush strokes unless you want those but this is my style so I just like to smooth it out and now you've got a nice basic underpainting start but if you don't have these flats in here it will change the look of the paint so let me go back to that watercolor brush that I like to use and let's uh, even a dark color let's go here let me make sure it's 
natural blend. Okay, so let's say I just start painting, okay? I'm just painting. Let's say I don't have, maybe I have some basic pencil line guides, you know, for my drawing. And I just start painting and I'm liking this and, and I like it. Okay, oh, but I need something on the in the background or I need to just change the whole background. So I go and I change this to, I want a blue. It changes the look of this paint right here. So if you wanted it this color, you need to have some, like a white background behind there to start off with so that if you make any changes underneath it, they don't show through. So it keeps the integrity of your, your color that you chose and it won't, it won't disrupt what's already happening here. So if you make changes, see, let's say I even, you know, see, it just changes the whole look. It doesn't even look purple anymore. But if you look at these, they still are. That blue is not showing through anywhere. Even under the area that I erased here in the, in her face, because I have at least one layer of solid underneath. Okay. So that's how that works. And that's why I do it. I've had some people ask me questions about why are you putting these flats? Why not just start painting? Um, and now there will be one other big reason why I've found that I've had to do something underneath. I've even had to go back because I forgot to start with something and I just, you know, I just started painting under the pencil drawing and then I was like, wait a minute, this is this, and I cha it, it changed because I changed the background and I forgot. So I had to literally go through here and just outline with the lasso selection as close as I could, put the layer, you know, underneath and then fill it in and clean it up afterwards. So see now because that white is over this peach right there on her face, but it's under this purple. So it's also, you know, it's it's like a lighter version of that purple. It just lightens that that purple. And, you know, so this is also a good way to kind of adjust your colors and, and give yourself some more things to play with. You know, so so there's lots of ways you can do it and you know it's just it's just another tool. But you need at least one solid layer underneath. That was a how to use Autodesk sketchbook quick tip. Be sure to like and subscribe for more as I will have more to come. Thanks for watching and stay creative.